Hello, Helldiver, and welcome. Today, I want to share my thoughts and experience for the stratagems in Helldivers 2. Recently, I did a stratagem tier list, but that one is already outdated. So let's go again, make a new one that is made specifically for in-game difficulty versus terminates. Now, let's dive. Before we jump into the tier list, I have to say that this is mine and my squad's opinion of the tier list. And it's made specifically for difficulty 7 and above versus Terminates. If you want to see one for the robots, then stay tuned, since I'm currently in the making of it. Oh, and also thanks have to be in order in here, to you. The last video I did is now reaching 150,000 views, so thank you. Mind blowing. Okay, let's start with the turrets. And the first one is going to be the Gatling turret. We will rank this one the A tier. It's really good when it comes to setting the horde of the Terminates, especially now after all the new hunters in the game. So yeah, it's going to be an A tier. Next, we got the little brother for the Gatling, and that's going to be the machine gun turret. That's just going to be an F. I, I don't even think I have to elaborate why. <laughs> Next one is going to be the HMG emplacement, and this is going to be an F tier. Because... When you use it, you're locked in place, and you're only shooting from the turret itself. You're not using your shoulder slowdown anymore. So, if you look upon how much damage you're delivering on the battlefield using the, AM, the HMG emplacement, compared to if you just use a straight-up Gatling turret and use your loadout on the shoulder, then that combined will do a lot more damage to the Terminates than you sitting in the HMG emplacement. EMS mortar, S tier. It is so powerful for doing crowd control on the battlefield. Landmines. I'm a bit biased on these because I rarely see anybody use them correctly. And most often it's going to be resulting in me or my teammates running over them or being dropped down in reinforcement in the minefield and therefore dying from it. F tier. Since we are on the mines, let's just take the incendiary ones. And just because they are slightly better, I'm going to give them the C instead. Tesla turret. This one depends on the mission. If you're doing the missions where you need to extract the civilians, then it can be pretty powerful if you place it correctly because you know where the reinforcements are coming from and therefore you can actually just wall off entire section of reinforcement as long as you deal with the charges because the charges just shake off the damage from this thing and ram it in, and just destroy it in one shot. The rocket sentry, I'll put that into the B tier. Um, it's, it is pretty damn good when it comes to shooting down heavies or bile titans, but I'd say that the autocannon is better. Just because the autocannon is more versatile than the rocket sentry is. We'll get into that a bit later. Now for the mortar sentry, and uh, we're gonna place it into the A tier. If you combine that with the EMS, it can deliver quite some fire on the battlefield. But the issue I tend to see a lot of the times when it comes to just this regular mortar compared to the EMS mortar is if you don't have the EMS, then eventually you will get swarmed by the Terminates. And when that happens, this mortar is most likely going to hit you as well. The auto cannon, I'm going to put that into the S tier. It is so versatile right now. It can deal with anything in the game when it comes to fighting the Terminates. Heck, even the robots, I'd say. It doesn't matter if the target's going to be a hunter, just a regular small circling, brute mother, heavy charger, or bile titan. It can kill anything. Yes, I know it's not because it's just going to straight up foreshot a bile titan, but if you chop this thing down and a bile titan is nearby, it will demolish the bile titan, as long as the bile titan doesn't go over and destroy it first. The shield generator. This is a weird one. Um, you can actually use this in a way it's not meant to be used and if you do that it can be really powerful let me give you an example but first where should we place it i'm gonna put it into the b tier b tier yeah so if you are running up to your big nests of the terminates and you drop the shield generator down straight in the middle of the nest, then all the terminates are just going to run in and hog this shield, trying to destroy it. Which means, if you have a follow-up nuke, you will just destroy all the terminates down in that hole. 
and then you're free to just run down there and start chucking nades and close all those glory holes. Moving on to the Eagle Air Strikes, and the first one is going to be the 500 kg. This is S tier. I do not think this comes as a surprise for you. It is extremely versatile, it can deal with anything on the battlefield. So yeah, S tier. Eagle Cluster Pump, I'm going to put that into the B. And that is specifically because when you move into high difficulties, you want your stratagems to be able to take care of the heavies, that being either charges, vile titans and that stuff. The clusters can't do that. Yes, they are really good at taking care of bark breaches and tons of circlings and hunters, but that is where it stops. The Eagle 110 Barrage, I'm putting that into the F tier. It just doesn't have the firepower to take care of the things you want to take care of when it comes to treasure gems, being heavy charges or vile titans. Now, they can be extremely good against the robots, but I'll get into that in the next video. Eagle Airstrike is going to go up into the A tier because it has multi purpose. Firstly, it's explosive, which means it does damage to vile titans and heavy charges, and also you can use it to close down the bug nest or the glory holes or whatever you will call it. The same goes for the Eagle Napalm. It can do the same thing and also it all and also it does damage against heavy charges and ball titans the eagle strafing run f tier and last we got the eagle smoke bombs for higher difficulties i'm going to put it into the c tier it can have some uses of disengaging enemies or smoking down patrols so they're not going to spot you but most often, when you find yourself in a situation where you need your stratagems, they aren't going to help you. Yes, you can call down the smoke and try to cover your asses with this thing, but most likely there's going to be so many enemies around you that they will spot you eventually. And with the eagles out of the way, we're going to move into the orbitals. And we're going to start with a 380mm orbital barrage. And I'm going to put that into the C tier just because of the lack of accuracy. The amount of times I've seen this thing being popped and just getting more team kills than killing enemies on the battlefield is ridiculous. Next up, we have the Orbital Rail Cannon, and I will put that into the S tier. Next, we got the Orbital Rail Cannon, and this one I'm going to put into the S tier. It's really efficient at taking care of the Heavy Charges and also the Bile Titan. Yes, it doesn't one-shot the Bile Titans, but whenever you land this thing on the Biles, you can finish them off really fast after, either with a turret, like the auto cannon turret, mortar turret, an airstrike, or just sap it with the arc turret. That'll take it down as well. Next, we got the walking barrage, and this one I'm going to be putting into the B tier. The reason why I'm putting it into the B tier is because when it comes to combating the terminates, you want something that is fast to be delivered on the battlefield. The walking barrage isn't fast on being delivered. So what often happens is when you pop this thing and it starts barraging down upon the battlefield, the enemies aren't there anymore. They moved away. The EMS strike. I see this thing having one proper use in the game right now for terminates, and that is you can pop this thing down on the bug breaches and therefore you can lock them down, kind of stun them when they breach up. And then you combine that with another one called the gas. That means whenever they spawn, they'll be locked in place and they'll start taking damage and eventually die from the gas, from the orbital gas strike. But that's two orbital stratagems just to do that combination. So because of that, both of these are going to move into the EFT. The orbital smoke, the same applies here as the eagle smoke. C tier. Orbital air bursts. F tier. I'd rather just take the cluster instead that has more charges and lower cooldown. Orbital Gatling Barrage. The same applies here. I just rather take the clusters. The orbital laser I will be putting into the S tier. You only have three charges per map, but whenever you pop this thing, it will decimate. And it doesn't care if it's going to be a bile titan, a heavy charge, or whatever it is. It's just going to destroy it. And what makes it really powerful as well is whenever it's done killing its target, it's just going to move over to the next target. While doing that, it's going to burn the entire field on the way to the next heaviest target on the battlefield. And yes, it does prioritize the heaviest target on the battlefield. Orbital position strike, I'll put into the B tier. I see this thing being like a smaller 500 kg drop in, but the main issue with it is it's not as powerful, it has longer cooldown, and it isn't delivered on the battlefield as fast as the 500 kg bomb is. Last for the orbitals, we have the 120 mm barrage. F tier. Let's move on. With the orbitals out of the way, we're going to go into the support strategies now. And the first one is going to be the arc thrower. 
Yagsa right now is my new favorite and go-to weapon. It can deal with anything on the battlefield. It ignores armor, goes straight into doing just damage to the weak spots. And I've killed a ton of charges and bile titans with it. When it comes to the bile titans, if somebody pops an orbital rail strike on the bile titan, it doesn't die, but I can just finish it off really fast after with using the arc through. When it comes to the heavy charges, I can take them out solo right now with the arc through. I'm just gonna start sapping it whenever it's gonna go into aggro range for me, and a lot of the time I'm able to take it down before it's gonna be within range to actually hit me. And even better is, whenever you're sapping bigger targets like the heavy charges, it's gonna arc over to all the minions surrounding that charger and kill those as well. The ultimate shield rifle, when it comes to fighting terminates, this is gonna be an F tier. I, I don't see what this gun delivers to the battlefield that is gonna be better than some of the other contestants in here. Now for the flamethrower. The flamethrower felt really good and fun to use after the buff, but it still has to be a B tier for me. And the main reason for it is because of you have to be so close to them before you can hit them. And that results in the new buffed hunters, they can jump you. If you can shoot them, they can chop your head off. Therefore, it doesn't go higher than a B tier. The laser cannon, it felt really good after the buffs to it. But still, it doesn't compete up against the arc thrower. The arc thrower is still faster at killing multiple enemies at the same time, or dealing with battle titans or heavy charges. But if you do not like the arc thrower, then I recommend give the laser cannon a go, because now you can actually kill heavy charges with it. Just aim for the rear of the legs on it and you will kill it. Grenade launcher depends on the mission. If you're doing a mission where you need to close those bug nest holes, the glory holes, then yeah, bringing one guy with a grenade launcher can be really smart. But that is where it's gonna stop. The spear, I'm putting that into the B tier. Just because we recently saw some buffs now for the recallers rifle and also the eat, and the spear also comes with a downside, as in you have to lock on your target before you can shoot it down. So, for Terminates, B tier. The Auto Cannon, also gonna be B tier. Just because it's lacking that armor penetration values. Most often, whenever you see yourself shooting targets where you want something as the Auto Cannon to deliver a punch, your shots is just gonna be reflected or ricochet off the target. MG43, I'm putting it into the F tier. I'd rather just take a Gatling turret auto cannon turret and then use my primary weapons or the arc thrower instead um that will deliver way more punch to the battlefield and the same goes for the stalwart the eat i will be putting into an at it is really good now when it comes to taking care of bile titans and the charges but i just don't like that you have to call it in every now and then because you only have one rocket on your back and then you need to run over to where you did the drop of it to grab a new one Sometimes that is fine, other times it isn't because you can't get over there again and grab a new one because it's being swarmed right now by goddamn hunters. And that is where the recallers rifle has a solution, because it comes with the ammo backpack. Not only can you just get the backpack for yourself and reload, but also over time during the mission you can share another backpack for a friendly guy within your squad and he can help you reloading it and in that case you can take down swarms of heavy charges or swarms of bile titans. I highly recommend that you will always bring one guy into your team with the recall this rifle now. The Railgun. This was my old favorite in the game, but man did they nerf it. And also not just nerf it, but right now there seems to be a bug with the gun. Let me elaborate. When it comes to the Railgun up against the bile titans, if your host is playing on a PC, forget all about trying to do a headshot. It's going to take you like 20 headshots to kill a Bile Titan with a red gun. However, if the host is playing on a PS5, you can kill the Bile Titan in two headshots with the rail gun. As long as you're going to overcharge it to around 85 to 90 percent. And that is also where the downside comes now. Because the window where you have to release the trigger and do a perfect shot on the enemy that either being a battle titan or heavy charger we're talking milliseconds and if you do not release it you are gonna die because it's gonna blow up in your face so because of this i'm putting into the c tier 
as it is right now. And now we're going to take a look at the backpacks. First off, we have the supply backpack. We never use it anymore. Just because that our loadout always consists of two guys using the arc thrower, maybe one with the orbital laser, and then our guns by themselves right now is also depending on overcharge like the new signal, the last 16. So we never find ourselves in the situations where we need somebody with a supply backpack. If anybody runs low, we always have the resupply ready to go again. FT. Ballistic shield backpack? What the hell is this thing even? F. Shield generator backpack. Even though they did nerf it, it's still really powerful. So I'll be putting that into the A tier. It's not a must have anymore. Um, I can definitely survive without it. So what we tend to do now is we have either one or two guys in the squad having this thing. So when we spawn in, they call in for themselves. And then after the first initial minutes, they can call down another set of them for the two others within the squad. And then we all have it now. The jump pack, F tier. Don't even try to convince me otherwise. The guard dog, I'm going to put that into the A tier. Where you see this thing shine the most is when you are actually trying to run away from the enemies. So therefore you can only use your sidearm. That is where this little bad boy can just start wreaking up kills while you are on the move. Not only that, but also because now we have the goddamn hunters. This backpack, it can definitely help you take care of those. And the same thing applies for the guard dog backpack. But just because you have to resupply this thing, and you can't resupply it by just looting ammo crates in the map, but only from doing the call-in of the resupply. So therefore, I'm just going to put into the CT. And finally, we have the mech suit. The way we use the mech suit is, we run to the extraction point when we get into a mission, and we drop one down over there and spend the cooldown. Reason being is because how the map heat works in the game. If you do not know how that works, then I recommend you go and watch my other video in the channel. It's the one with 150,000 views right now. That kind of explains why you want the max suit to be available for you at the exfil extraction that is. The other charts, pop it whenever you feel like it in the battlefield. And that, my friends, is my tier list for all stratagems in Helldivers 2 when it comes to combatting the Terminates on difficulty 7 or above. Now most likely, there will be some in here that disagree with my opinion on the stratagems tier lists, and that's alright. Feel free to let us know down in the comments. Just remember to stay cool and don't become a toxic toad, please. And if you're still watching, maybe consider doing a sub in here and stay tuned for my next videos. Thank you for watching, take care, goodbye.